Sarah Crudus, a space journalist, and Andrew Sims, an author and campaigner. Well, Sarah, I'll start with you. Uh, there are serious misgivings about the amount of money spent on space science. In terms of austerity, it's a bit too much, isn't it? We've well, got to remember, for every pound you put in, in terms of the UK, you get ten back. So if we're going to look at the money, if we really have to do that, it's generating income, it's generating innovation, it's generating jobs, and it's generating inspiration. But we are humans, we're built to go over the hill, we've explored the, the Earth, and now we're looking towards space with this one planet in this one average solar system, which is one of many out there in the universe. And to say we're not going to explore space, we're not going to go over that hill, is myopic and short-sighted. We're built to explore. And then secondly, going into space is as much about Earth and our own planet and looking back at Earth. I mean, the art, the images you've got of space, of the Earth from the Moon, that tiny pale blue dot of Earth around Saturn's rings helps us to understand we need to protect this planet, we need to look after this planet. So it's multifaceted while we must continue to explore space. Andrew, for every one pound we put in, we get ten pound back. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? Well, look, I'm, I'm a child of the space generation, of the, the moon landings and Star Wars and Star Trek. I, I think it's a, a beautiful thing, and we should certainly study it. Um, and we had a bit of a clue about what we should have learned in the introduction there, that the one thing that space exploration should have taught us is that we should better look after the planet, our own planet. But that's simply not happening. And I think um, we need to look after this one before we go up and mess any others up. And I think there's an irony and a danger. For all the effort that we put into finding maybe microbial life on another planet somewhere. We're prosecuting a mass extinction event on Earth, the, Earth, the, the planet's sixth greatest mass extinction event. And I think there's a danger, too, that if the moment we start imagining that there's a possible escape route from here, that we might be able to kind of leave this planet and go and live somewhere, which I think is wildly impractical, um, it almost gives us a psychological excuse. It's a displacement. It gives us an excuse to, to not look after the very planet that we've already got. That's incredible. Well, that, though, that, 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 well let's find out how practical that actually is. Emma's uh, speaking to someone about that. Yes, we're joined now by Dr Helen Fraser, an astrochemist and a senior lecturer in astronomy at the Open University. Good morning to you, Helen. Do you agree Good with morning. Stephen Hawking? He suggests we'll eventually get to the point of no return on Earth. Do you agree with that? Well, I think it is a little bit difficult. I mean, what we do with our space exploration at the moment is we really combine what's both robotic and human exploration. And I think everyone's been very focused this week on the human exploration element. But the whole point of what the government is trying to say and with the spaceport is really that we have end-to-end -end access to space. And space, every single one of us has a mobile phone in our pocket and a GPS system. We use it day in, day out, and it's part of our integral infrastructure now here on the Earth. But do you think people like yourself, who, who really know about this stuff, you work in it every day, do a good enough job at communicating the benefits to people? Because I can already see <laughs> the comments coming in on social media saying, well, we're apparently living in times of austerity. Why should we bother investing in a different planet? OK, I think, I think that's a really good point. And I think um, it's also really important to get a little bit of a perspective on this. And uh, being a scientist, obviously, I've been on a particular side of the argument when we've seen sort of red buses with numbers about what might happen in the EU. But what I like to say is I like to say when you get your tax return, at the bottom of it you get some kind of pie chart, there's a little graph with all the different colours on it, shows where your money's gone in paying your taxes. A tiny slither of that is called other. And a tiny slither of that other is actually all the money that the government, as opposed to industry, is investing into um, as the space industry and space technology and space research. In actual fact, the space research, this opportunity to simply go explore is a very tiny slither. The majority of this money that's in the space industry is actually related to looking down, looking down at the Earth, doing disaster relief, uh, trying to get a, an internet to the third world and developing countries, trying to exploit space opportunities in low Earth orbit for the benefit of mankind here on the Earth. Dr. So, Fraser, you've, done a good, you've done a good job there of answering some of your critics. Let me bring it back into the studio. Thank you for that. Sean. Emma, Thank a you. tiny slither. I'm just trying to imagine that. That tiny slither of money. It's hardly any money. We've got GPS, we've got disaster relief. I'll add to that solar panels, uh, cell phone cameras. I mean, space gives us so much here on Earth. Well, look, I'm absolutely not against um, space exploration study in principle. And if it is focused on those things, which allow us to better under understand ourselves and to better live on planet Earth. Well, that's great, but let's not forget in the same Queen's speech which announced this new package, there was no action to correct the problem with 
the, the way that money going into renewable energy, which is vital for tackling climate change and displacing fossil fuels, there was no action on that. And we're facing a situation in which inconsistent policy and the withdrawal of funds for renewable energy is making it look as if we're going to see a 95% drop in investment in renewable energy. So, so yes, absolutely, let's use it intelligently. But, but let's remember that we can we look at the stars, we can dream about the stars, we can study them to learn how to better live here. But let's not fall for that temptation of thinking right. we can escape Renewable planet Earth. energy is more important. Well, let's put it this way. The way we explore space is changing. It used to be about governments, now it's about private industry. One of the big things to pick up on your earlier point, Andrew, is that actually Jeff Bezos, the um, guy behind Amazon, second richest man in the world, he's looking at moving manufacturing off Earth so that we can save planet Earth. It's not about going and living on Mars. It's about improving our planet and working with technology. Humans have undoubtedly had an effect on our climates. However, it's the technology which comes from space and how we can utilise low Earth orbit for manufacturing, going to the moon, etc., for mining and asteroid mining, which will actually improve life on Earth. We are built to explore. Um, we're in a new area. You could think of the moon landings as being the Columbus moment. We're now in the Mayflower moment to draw the comparison with American history. You can't stop progress, but you've got to work with the technology you have in order to improve life on Earth. So space does benefit the environment. Well, I'm not sure if there's life out there in space, but there's certainly there. viewers out there. There are, Emmy. Yeah, they're divided on this. Okay, Caroline, <laughs> you've got in touch to say we've already destroyed one planet. Can we just leave the rest alone? Until world hunger is eradicated, there's no justification in spending this money. But Art says, sounds a bit more like a dreamer, a David Bowie fan perhaps, we need to reach up, move out and see what the universe has in store for us. Peter says our governments already waste enough of our money. Space will never be a cheap option. Let the rich and famous pay for it and go it alone. Matthew says we should explore space, but use the lessons we have learnt from our past mistakes when we first conquered countries here on Earth. And Joan says, put this money into feeding the starving and making dams across Africa. Thank you for all those comments. Keep using the hashtag BBCSML. Sean. Emma, thank you. Let's talk about the next generation. There could be a little kid watching this who is inspired and goes on to save the Earth by working out which planet we can, we can live on. I mean, this is in future. This is really important for the future generation, isn't it? Well, I've got a daughter that I've taken to any number of space, um, space museums. She's absolutely fascinated. We used to sit and watch videos of um, rockets taking off and, and, and the space shuttle. Yes, absolutely. But let's keep focused on the need to work things out where we are now. We're losing the climate in which human civilization evolved. And with the best technology available, if you wanted to get a person to the nearest Earth like planet, it would take longer than the history of civilization. So we need to be focused. I am that so slightly worried. I'm that slightly okay. worried. I'm slightly worried. Okay. At, rates we can't well, at the moment, that's the case. It would take tens of thousands of years. But, but, we but my, land my, on the my one concern is that when we start talking about the, the industrialization of space, we start to repeat the same economic model yeah. that we've made a okay. mess on Earth with. One very brief word, Sarah. Curiosity <laughs> is the essence of human existence. How can you be a child born in this country, inspired by Tim Peake, and not be able to work in this industry? We're built to go over the, explore, uh, over the hill and explore and there's so much more out there. For every star you see in the night sky, there's at least one planet. So just imagine what else is waiting to be explored. There's more than one word, but you spoke very quickly. <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> there Andrew, we go. thank you very much indeed. Curiosity, indeed.